My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control Software Tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this tutorial, Using Frame Rate Profile, Part 1, Step to Change, we will detail the steps necessary to use this unique feature. Before I start, I need to point out the Frame Rate Profile feature is only supported by Phantom Cameras manufactured prior to late 2011, the PA7 camera models, not the cameras manufactured from 2012, the PA16 camera models to date. Frame Rate Profile allows the user to define different sample rates that automatically change by either ramping up or down to the next frame rate, the default method, or at user specified points during the capture process of post trigger frames for either method. However, the initial profile can be applied to pre trigger frames, with the frame rate profile change being applied to post trigger frames only. For example, Let's say we want to capture the fin deployment, separation, and targeting of a projectile at high speed, and as it travels downrange, it's recorded at near real-time speed. This function also helps extend the recording time and helps keep file sizes as small as possible. So what do we need to do? Imagine we have a projectile we want to capture at five different frame rates as follows. Fin deployment, separation, and targeting captured in high speed, and as it travels down rates, it's kept at a much slower frame rate or sample rate. Since I don't have access to a real projectile to record, I'm going to use the string it toy to demonstrate this, but you should get the idea just the same. The first thing we need to do is select a camera from the available cameras. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the Phantom V12 Cam 1 camera. I'll select the camera by double clicking on the camera under the cameras group, then click on the live control panel tab. The next thing I need to do is set the resolution, sample rate, and exposure settings for the fastest frame rate we will be capturing during the entire cine. This is so the camera will properly be exposed when it changes to the fastest frame rate. In our case, the fastest frame rate will be 20,000 frames per second. To capture at this rate, I need to enter a resolution of 768 by 320 pixels. Now I can set the sample rate to 20,000 frames per second by selecting it from the pull down selection list and adjust the exposure time according to our light conditions here so I can record at the fastest sample rate during the shot. With my Cine settings defined, I'll perform a CSR or current session reference just to clean up the displayed images. However, you should note that a CSR will not be valid once the frame rate changes, so the image quality may not be what you expect. OK, now that we have the proper exposure and the fastest sample rate, I'm ready to set up the frame rate profiles. For this scenario, the pre-trigger frames will be used to simulate the capture of fin deployment at a sample rate of 5,000 pictures per second. Since 5000 is not in the pull down selection list, I'm going to type in 5000 in the sample rate data entry field and hit the enter key. Now what we need to do is specify the trigger position. Notice that the camera can record a total of 46,122 images. Let's say fin deployment takes one and a half seconds. This means I need 7500 images to capture it. 5,000 images a second times 1.5 seconds equals 7,500 images. That leaves us with 38,622 frames that I can use to record post trigger frames. However, I'm going to add another half a second or 2,500 frames or buffer space just in case fin deployment starts just a little sooner than expected. That now leaves us with 36,122 frames we can use as post trigger frames. So I'm going to enter 36,122 in the last field and hit the enter key to set the number of post trigger frames we will record. Now, let's click on the frame rate profile selector 
and specify when the frame rates require a change and the rates they need to be. Before I can do that, I need to enable the frame rate profile feature by placing a check mark in the active enable box. By default, the frame rate profile feature uses a ramp technique between frame rate intervals. However, since I want to equate an image number with the time the change is expected to occur, I'm going to apply a step technique. How the intervals are to be defined between the rate changes can be selected from a pull down selection list in the frame rate profile area. The interval can be set to change on a specific image number or a specific time defined in seconds, an image percentage, a percentage of the total number of post trigger frames, or a time percentage, a percentage of the post trigger frames recording duration. For this example, I'm going to change the frame rates at specific image numbers. You'll see why later in this tutorial. Before we start defining the frame rate profiles, I want you to notice the PT or post trigger duration, the time it will take to record the post trigger frames of 7.225 seconds. Since I need 7500 frames for fin deployment, I want to maintain the 5000 frames per second for 7500 frames or one and a half seconds. So I'm going to enter into the image number field indicated by the asterisk 7500 and in its associated rate field 5000 frames per second. So let's set the first frame rate change to capture the projectile as it travels down range for a short period of time before separation takes place. Since we don't need to capture this part of the test at high speed, I'll set the frame rate up to change on image 7501 to a near real time of 30 frames per second. In the last line indicated with the asterisk of the frame rate profile table, then hit the enter key. Notice the PT duration has increased to 12.881 seconds. I'll explain the graph after I define all the profiles. Now, let's say the projectile is going to travel downrange for 30 seconds before separation takes place. Since the camera is only recording at 30 frames per second, I'll need to record 900 frames of downrange travel, that's 30 frames per second, times 30 seconds, which equals 900 frames. Notice the PT duration has increased to 45.522 seconds. This is because the memory buffer is filling at a slower rate than it was originally. Now I need to change the frame rate to record separation at the fastest frame rate we determined before I started the process, 20,000 frames per second. I'll start the rate at the next image number, 8,402, and enter these parameters in the last line of the table and hit the enter key. Notice the PT duration has decreased to 33.718 seconds. For this simulation, separation is expected to be completed within one second so I need to maintain the recording speed at 20,000 frames per second for another 20,000 images. So I'll set the image number 28,402 to 2,000 frames per second and hit the enter key. Notice the PT duration has decreased and again I'll set the frame rate to 30 frames per second for downrange travel starting at the next image number 28,403. And just like I did before, I need to calculate the number of frames it will take to travel downrange for 60 seconds before it reaches its target. So if I do the math correctly, 30 frames per second times 60 seconds equals 1,800 frames. Therefore, I need to maintain a frame rate of 30 frames per second to image number 30,203. So I need to enter image number 30,203 and set it to 30 frames per second. The remainder of the shot will be used to record targeting at a rate of 10,000 frames per second. So I need to set the next image number, 30,204, to 10,000 frames per second. And set the last frame, image number 36,122, to 10,000 frames per second. So the rate is maintained until the end of the recording. Notice the last frame is already in the table 
So all I need to do is change its rate, in this case, to 10,000 frames per second. The PT duration tells us it will take 93.093 seconds to finish recording all the post-trigger frames. OK, now I'll explain the rate graph. Notice how the yellow line steps up and down to the next frame rate change, displayed in magenta. It is a graphical representation of how the post-trigger buffer is used based on the intervals and frame rate changes we just defined. Now, let's click on the Capture button to start recording pre-trigger frames into the camera's circular buffer. As you can see, the preview panel still displays a live image of what the camera is recording and the system tells us the camera is in both the live and recording modes. The capture button changes into an abort recording button and the trigger button is now active indicating the camera is waiting for a trigger signal. For more information on various ways a camera can be triggered, review the Capturing Your First Cine tutorial. I'm going to provide a soft trigger by clicking on the trigger button. Notice the camera indicates that it is recording post-trigger frames by the flashing recording indicator. Once the camera has recorded all the post-trigger frames, the recording indicator will go inactive, the live indicator will remain active, and the abort recording button changes back to the capture button. When I open the manager tab, you can see the camera has recorded Cine 1 in the V12 Cam 1 camera. Now, let's take a look at the Cine I just recorded by selecting the V12 Cam 1 Cine 1 by opening the Play tab. Notice Cine 1 has been opened in a playback panel. And I can use the video playback buttons to review the Cine. For more information on reviewing a Cine, see the Reviewing Your First Cine tutorial. Before we start reviewing the Cine, I'm going to open the Frame Rate Info Selector to help explain how Frame Rate Profile works. I want you to notice that the image being displayed is image number negative 9999 and the frame interval for this frame is 200 microseconds essentially telling us the camera recorded this frame at 5000 frames per second. When I click the play button note the speed at which the file plays back. Now I'm going to pause the playback and jump to image number 7500. That's where I said I wanted the frame rate to change to 30 frames per second. But notice the frame interval indicates the camera is still recording at 5000 frames per second. However, if I advance the Cine three more frames using the Advance One Frame Forward button, notice the frame interval has changed to 33,333.3 microseconds telling us the camera recorded this image at 30 frames per second. It does this because the rate change actually takes a few images to complete. 
To visually see the frame rate change, I'm going to jump back to image number 7450 and start the playback again. Notice when the Cine reaches image number 7503, the playback speeds up. Now I'll pause the Cine and jump to image number 8402. That's when I instructed the camera to start recording at 20,000 frames per second. And once again, notice the rate has not yet changed. However, if I advance the Cine using the Play One Frame Forward button, just like it did before, it takes a couple of frames for the rate change to take effect. Notice now, the frame interval has changed to 49.98 microseconds, or 20,000 frames per second. Once again, I'll jump back a few frames and play the Cine so you can see the frame rate change. As you can see, once the Cine reaches frame 8,404, the playback slows down dramatically because the images were recorded at a frame rate of 2,000 frames per second. Now if I pause the Cine and jump to frame 28,403 and advance the Cine one frame at a time, it takes a few frames for the frame rate to change back to 30 frames per second. So once again, I'll jump back a few frames and play the Cine so you can see the change in the playback speed. And finally, when I jump to the last frame rate change, frame 30,204, it once again takes a couple of frames for the change to take effect. As you can see, by the frame interval indicating the camera recorded these images at 10,000 frames per second. And like before, I'll jump back a few frames and start the Cine so you can see the frame rate change. So that's how to define the frame rate profile to step or jump to another frame rate in the profile. So that concludes the Using Frame Rate Profile Part 1 Step to Change tutorial, where you learned how frame rate profile works and how to step or jump frame rate changes.